Will the market go up or down? Should you lock in or float? Find out this and more with Master of the Markets, hosted by Barry Habib of MBS Highway. Brought to you by United Wholesale Mortgage. Does your wholesale lender do this for you? Free customizable marketing materials, online loan tracking for your clients, returns your past clients to you, and complimentary client retention campaigns. Don't you think it's about time you found one that does? Partner with United Wholesale Mortgage and receive these benefits and more. Welcome to another edition of Master of the Markets. I'm Barry Habib at MBS Highway, and this is created exclusively for Mortgage News Network. We have an exciting week to look forward to this week with a lot of housing data to be released, along with Fed minutes, which often cause volatility, and a very important CPI report, Consumer Price Index, that will help the Fed gauge the level of inflation and perhaps help them decide if they're going to hike rates on September 17th. So let's break it down one at a time. We all know housing is near and dear to our hearts, and we also know that the media has been bashing housing for a very long time. And you know what? They've been wrong. So why do they bash housing? Well, the media knows that striking fear into a viewer's heart is something that will gain them eyeballs and get them attention. So there is a negative bias that we see in the media, but we all know how badly they've gotten it wrong. And the viewers who have heeded the media's advice and stayed away from housing and chosen to rent have missed out on rather significant gains in the, in the housing market, meanwhile watching their rents escalate pretty dramatically every single year. So what we want to do right now is break down some of those media myths and talk about how the housing market remains solid, remains stable, and allow you to have some tools that you can bring to light and help your real estate agent metaphorically hold the hand of their customer through the blitz of media negativity. And also for you to be that advisor and lender for life for your customer who can really guide them and separate yourself from competition. So the first thing is that since we have so much housing data coming out this week, it will be talked about and analyzed. I expect the information to be rather strong because look, supply is low, demand remains high, this is still a very good time. Affordability levels are very strong. All the factors we talked about. And when we look at levels of appreciation, they've been pretty darn good. They've been over 6% levels of appreciation nationwide. I know real estate is very local. But the forecast in the year, the year ahead is to be at around 5% appreciation. And you know, the arguments that you're going to hear this week, undoubtedly, with all the housing data coming out, will be, is 5% a sustainable level of appreciation? because incomes are not keeping up. According to the latest jobs report, incomes are rising on the median side by 2.3%, while home prices were going up at 6%. So that doesn't jive. Home prices aren't keeping up. Okay, let's take this step by step. So first of all, when we take a look at the median income, which is what's being used, it's not the case because only, well, I shouldn't say only, but almost two thirds of individuals are in the home buying area, whereas a little over one third of individuals are renting. So it's not like it's 100% so you can use the median amount, and those people typically on the rental side don't have as high an income as the people who are purchasing homes. So it's unfair to just use median income as a gauge. They should only use it for those people that are looking to purchase a home. But throwing out that argument for a moment, what they also talk about is the fact that at 2.3% rise in income, how come? How can that keep up with a 5% gain? So let's talk about that in specifics and I have some charts for you to look at. So is 5% appreciation sustainable? Well, if incomes are only rising by 2.3%, the media is getting it wrong because it's okay that incomes are not keeping up with the amount that home prices are rising because first of all, when you take a look, we use the average front ratio of individuals who are homeowners. If you take a look, according to Fannie and Freddie, the average front ratio, the median front ratio, I should say, pardon me, is a 20. So when we take a look at that, it includes something called leverage that I'll explain. And by the way, it's not home price that we need to keep up with, it's home payment. You see, home prices could actually go down, but if interest rates go up, well then, you lose affordability, don't you? So let's look at an example. If we were to say that your mortgage payment 
were $1,000 per month. And let's say that mortgage payment were based on the average ratios that we see for a front ratio, it would stand to reason that the median, I should say, income with a $1,000 payment would be about $5,000. So $5,000 a month income, $1,000 a month payment equals a front ratio of 20, which is the median front ratio. So let's just say that there was a 5% rise in cost. So if your $1,000 per month payment went up 5%, that would be $1,050. Now, does your income have to go up by 5% to match that? Well, if you're looking at a $50 per month increase here, $50 a month increase based upon your monthly income of $5,000 is only a 1% increase in income. So, if you have steady interest rates and if you have home prices going up by 5%, well, then your income typically only needs to go up 1%. And we're seeing incomes go up by 2.3%. So this argument just simply does not hold water. The income rise that we're seeing by 2.3% is more than enough to carry a 5% level of appreciation. In fact, it can sustain a much higher level of appreciation. So it's an important factor. We should explain this to our real estate agents and walk our customers through because right now is an excellent time to buy. Now, there is another report that we're going to have coming out this week, and I think it's a very important one, and that is the Consumer Price Index Report. We're going to get that on Wednesday along with the Fed Minutes, and that's going to be a very volatile day. Now, why is Consumer Price Index so important? Because the Fed is watching levels of inflation, and the Consumer Price Index is one measure of inflation that the Fed does keep a close watch on. Now, they have an overall number, which includes food and energy, but they really are focused on the core number. It takes out food and energy and measures costs of a basket of goods and services that the Fed wants to watch to see if it confidently moves towards 2%, then they probably will pull the trigger on a rate hike so long as employment stays strong. So let's take a look at that a little bit more closely. The current core consumer price level up for this index is 1.8% on a year-over-year -year basis, close to their 2% target, but getting there. Now, how is this measured? Well, it's a series of monthly numbers. It takes the most recent 12 number, 12 months. So when we take a look at this, it goes the 2015 figures and the remaining 2014 figures, so you have 12 months. And it replaces these numbers as time goes on. So in other words, when we recently got the number for June, which was released in mid-July, it replaced the 2014 number. So out goes the 2014 number, and in comes the 2015 number for June. So what we have to do is we have to take a look at how this has an impact on the overall year-over-year -year figure. So let's go back and take a look. When this one-tenth of a percent for June was replaced, the, the year-over-year -year level was 1.7. So the June of 2015 came in at two-tenths, causing CPI to rise to 1.8%. If the same thing happens in July, we're only going to replace a one-tenth of a percent. If this comes in up two-tenths, CPI will rise to 1.9. And look at August of 2015. We won't get this till September 16th, the day before the Fed decision. If that comes in also up two-tenths, well, then we've got CPI year over year up 2.1%. And that would certainly put the Fed in position to either hike rates. And if they don't, well, then the bond market's going to cause interest rates to rise on mortgages. So that's why we have to watch this very carefully because the bond market will protect itself. If the Fed isn't going to curb inflation, the bond market will respond by, high, by raising yields and that will cause mortgage rates to rise. Okay, hope you found this helpful. This is great information to talk about with your customers and realtors. And you know what? If you want to get access to this every day, access to these tools, charts to share, both on social media, handouts, just subscribe for free below to MBS Highway. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Today's Master of the Markets was brought to you by United Wholesale Mortgage. This is Mortgage News Network.